Alright, so there's Kevin and there's Kevin's Beewers. And today we are going to be replacing the piston and barrel kit. As we've been faffing on this bike for a while because it wasn't performing very well and it was pretty smoky with a fair amount of oil residue on the pop. <laughs> so we then adjusted the two-stroke pump, um, no change. Still poor performance and lots of, of oiliness. Um, we just get a wipe and it's not too bad. Um, we then put it onto premix and same issue. Uh, still smoking heavily, which means any one thing uh, thereafter uh, rings of buggered. Ah, so there's Kev, still busy with the exhaust. Um, the Techni gas, the outlet there, it comes through 90 degrees very, very quickly. And to get in there with any form of tool is a complete pain in the ass. Um, it came with two little little bolts. I've replaced that with um, an Allen key. And I cut off an Allen key into that little stubby tool that you've got there. There we go, so you can get in there easier. Not that it's easy, but nonetheless, we shall persevere. And then the next step thereafter is that's going to come out, the old spark plug cap followed by the spark plug, followed by the fan cowling. Then the head's off and barrel and we're winning. Nice hair, Kev. Thank you. Alright, there's the fan cowl. There's three bolts in here, one in there and that horrible little one in the corner. Um, there's the one there. No, that's Kevin, that's not a bolt. Um, and then another little top tip is when you've done the bolts, put them in something. KFC tub. Mash and gravy for the win. Success, there's your fan. And yeah, I'm gonna put this in there as well, so it doesn't get away. What'd you got there, Kev? Uh, that is for the exhaust. Ah, alright, so we're gonna yeah, keep everything good. bagged and tagged, as it were. And Kevin's been quite diligent in getting in here and cleaning everything for me. Nothing worse than trying to do this job and there's two stroke and grease and filth and uh, you know the odd midget stuck in your engine. Glorious. Nicely done, man. Right? Yeah. Right, spark plug time. And that's a new plug we put in a, a few months ago. I think it's an 8 heat range, which is kind of what you want for a slightly modded bike. That's right yeah. Oh, there we go. COVID right there. No, great. It, was, it wasn't too tight, which is exactly what you want. And for those wondering what that bottle's doing there, um, that we fixed up with a few cable ties so that when we went onto premix, um, the residual oil in the can, even though we drained the can or the reservoir, just the, the oil in the actual piping, uh, it doesn't matter how much it is, it still makes a hell of a mess. Let's eyeball that plug there. Oh, Kev, I've got your jetting just about bang on. All right, and here comes the other half of the air cowl. It's a bit of a faff. Um, the Kevin's uh, on it like a bad rash. There we go. Done, dude. Yeah. All right, and here comes the head. Well, I say here it comes. I mean, we're still going to get the, the four 10 mil nuts off. So I'm using an extra length uh, 10 mil. Just makes things a bit easier. It's, it's not that dirty, which is a good thing. The bike's not too bad either. Okay, so that one and that one. There's a bit of oily residue in there. Well, that's normal for a two-stroke, so... Good news. We'll clean it up once it's off in any event. When I say we, I mean you. So the plan is, uh, Kev's keen to learn how the little smokers work, and I'm keen to teach. So uh, just not keen to get my hands incredibly dirty. I've done that too many times. So Kev's going to be covered in, in oil and soot and uh, you know feathers. So that's the plan. He gets to learn. I stay clean. All right, and here comes the head. How does it look? Not bad actually. Um, I've seen ones that are far more kind of suited up and carboned up. And let's just check what the mileage is here. 18,000 odd, almost 19. So that's normal. We'll clean that up. And the handbook recommends cleaning it up as well. 
um, yeah, I think we are going to be golden. The question is, what does it look like down there? Mm, all right, so you see, there's a lot of Filing. carbon that's fallen off into the ball. So obviously, like if we were going to reuse this, we wouldn't be spinning the the, the piston randomly now. Uh, we'll see, and maybe I should film what I want you to see. Yeah, a little bit of carbon, but that's normal. We'll sort it out shortly. So, we're giving the barrel, the base of the barrel and the crankcase, just a quick wipe with a mountain bike brush, just to get rid of any kind of sandy residue that could fall into the engine. Because it's obviously a bad thing. And Kevin's pretty diligent. I asked him to clean it a while back, um, and it seems to have worked rather well. I've seen much dirtier bikes. Man, this thing is pristine. Alright, so next step is pulling the barrel off. Kevin's given the base over to clean. Um, for those of you who are not familiar with it, so it literally just pulls straight off, um, as Kevin's shown us there. Uh, the trick is now, there's not much space between the frame and the actual bolts. There we go, Kevin's just showed you the problem. Um, it takes a bit of wigglage to get it out. Um, so sometimes it's better to be on the side stand or some of them actually just sit on the bike to actually change the pivot point um, so that you have a bit more room. So that's what I'm going to do now. A little kind of titbit, um, when the bike is on, standing on its own wheels, keep this grab rail mounted, get a friend to just push down on that. It gives it ample room in the bottom there to get that off and it came off so easily. Kevin's surprise was just actually awe. Delightful. Um, there's the barrel, it's off, and as you can see, massively scored. So this barrel is due for the dustbin, or in this case, um, due for overboring. Hmm. There was a Porsche going past. Oh, a little air cool jobby. Bit of a two-stroke Ken in a way. Um, nonetheless, so yeah, uh, we'll rebore that at some point. But in the meantime, we're going to fit another piston kit. And we'll also check the current piston to see what damage uh, and scoring it has. Alright, success. There's the piston. Next thing is to remove the, uh, the piston clip and of course then the piston wrist pin and then out she comes. That piston's looking pretty bad. You can see a huge amount of, of blow by from the rings down towards the skirt. So yeah, it's a good thing we're replacing this sucker. Success. There's the wrist pin. Um, and the best way to remove that is with an engineer's pick which is that sucker there, and of course a little flat bladed screwdriver if and when is required. And then finally, needle nose pliers. And of course the top tip is to, before you attempt this, is to plug the crankcase with some toilet paper or a suitable rag, um, so that if this does get out of control and fly out of your needle nose pliers and into the bore, um, you've got trouble. So that's it there, I've plugged it with some, some toilet paper, um, so that I don't have to strip the engine if it gets uh, a little out of hand. And of course the same applies when you reassemble. Um, but yeah, so that's the wrist pin out, sorry, the, the wrist clip, there's the wrist pin there, covered in soot and uh, some sort of black cheese, it seems. Alright, success. So Kevin has pushed out the wrist pin from that side and the piston is now free. Um, and that's it. There's the piston looking rather chewed up and Oh yeah, that is that is for the dustbin. Or you throw it at a passerby, depending on whichever comes first. Okay, all the way from Taiwan, little barrel kit. So don't be scared of ta Taiwanese parts, because everything Yamaha 4VP, which is official code, comes from the Taiwan. We got couple of gaskets and actually comes with a standard exhaust gasket as well. We're not going to need that because we've got Technigas action happening here. Um, so I've already pre-fitted the, the piston as you can see with the arrow faces, the exhaust port. Um, rings are already in. Uh, this, this is kind of brand new so I didn't bother to, to gap the piston rings because they come from uh, pretty much the same factory as the factory components. So yeah, that's going to go on rather shortly. Quite. So Kev, what are you doing over there? Yeah, yeah. Bit, of, bit, of a, bit of a skinned knuckle. Oh, huh? That's a standard issue for anything uh, scooter related. So another top tip, when it comes to fitting the piston, 
fit the most difficult to reach wrist clip first and of course pre-assemble it so that you can slide the barrel in quite easily because trying to con compress rings when the barrel is separate is a nightmare there's not much space to move in a beaver so, so that's the plan so there's Kev uh, faffing on his brand new piston kit So what's interesting about this piston kit um, is the ring setup is very similar to the factory ones where those little 45 degree um, notches around that little pin kind of tighten around the pin. Some other ones from China, uh, the 45 degree area actually faces the barrel um, out which is really which is really odd. But nonetheless, uh, they seem to work rather well and you can see the rings there um, I don't know what they're made of, but they obviously have a coating on the outside and it looks like they're kind of some form of, of copper or something, I'm not too sure. And of course the big difference between factory rings is that factory rings, each ring is almost two rings um, combined, so we'll, actually, hang five, I'll show you what the difference is. There you can see how there's kind of dual rings within one ring. Um, I don't know why they do that, I, I guess it's, you know, some oil gets, you know, stuck between those two rings in that little notchy line and yeah nonetheless for that price of the, of the Chinese one or at least the Taiwanese one you can buy four of those all right good news there's the new fresh ball and pistons it's already on there uh, we are now going to come around to the right hand side of the bike and mate up the the conrod and the piston once that's done, we're going to give the head a good clean uh, and then reassemble. Hold it tight. Alright, new barrel and piston is in and it's smooth sailing. Look at that, beautiful. So I'm actually giving the, the fan a, a twill over there so that you can see what's happening. And of course the arrow over there is pointing to the exhaust port as it should. So. There's the head gasket, this of course you can reuse, so Kevin's just pulling all the carbon off. Anyway, Kevin's busy cleaning all of that up, I've given it a bit of a clean a few minutes ago, taking the most of the, of the filth off it. Most of it. But there's still a shitload on there, goodness gracious, that's hectic. So yeah, we'll give it a good clean and reassemble. And then here, so that's the factory head gasket. And that's the one from the kit. Obviously somewhat different being uh, copper versus paper and aluminium. And this is much thicker than the standard one. So, you know, in the name of uh, good compression, I'm going to opt for the standard one. Um, but let me mic them first. So here's the, the kit one. It's 1.5 mils thick. Let's compare that with the factory one. Right, there's a factory copper gasket. And that's half a mil. So that's, uh, oh, you know, 0.4, even better. So that's a 1.1 mil compression saving. So um, I've already checked within the barrel itself. There's a huge amount of, uh, of distance between the top of the piston's uh, travel. <laughs> um, another top tip, that is a brush from a mountain bike sprocket cleaning kit that I had from some time ago. And it works really, really well. And spaniels too. Nikki, are we gonna give you a scrub? This is like support ya. Yeah, here we go. Cheerleader. Your tail is a perfect uh, implement upon which to clean that uh, spark plug hole, little dog. Come here. Put this in there in a sec. I think we got most of it there. Yeah, we'll just give it a blast now with the hose pipe. We'll dry it off in any event because we need to. Uh, get uh, it onto some. Well, it's looking pretty good. Let me get in there. Yeah, great. Oh, get in there. We're not there yet, but we're almost there. There we go. Just cleaning up the head with some 800 water paper. I've put a dab of Q20 in there as well, just to help flow all the material um, so it doesn't clog up the, the water paper. And, uh, you know, you don't have to go to town on it, because obviously the more material you remove, that does affect your overall uh, chamber size. 
Okay, now we say clean up the, the mating surface, and this is per factory manual, water paper, and go in a figure of eight movement on a flat surface. Yeah, I'll do that a couple of times. Nice clean surface, and we are good to reassemble. Right, heads going on, which is on the right way. Um, we are going to put some copper slip on the threads. Kev, okay, what you got there? All the components. Uh, are you giving your nuts a clean? I am giving my nuts a clean. Oh, dude, you know, carb clean. Clean nuts are massively underestimated. Um, in fact, squeaky clean nuts are often recommended. <laughs> right, copper slip about to go onto Kevin's nuts. It's quite interesting, we've gone from squeaky clean nuts to partially lubed nuts. Alright, and on she goes. Other way. Righty tighty lefty douchebag. So just gonna go kind of finger tightish with the regular ratchet, and then we'll move on to the torque wrench. There we go. See when it clicks, then it's done. Yeah, that's it. Don't go any further than that. You can go all the way tight now. There we go. Oh, stop. When it clicks, stop. <laughs> Otherwise, you, you're gonna you risk there. stripping the the nuts. There we go. Perfect. Done. All right. Success. Yeah. All right. So next step is reassembly. So that's the the fan cowling around the barrel, and it is it's not filthy, but now's a good time to give it a bit of a a bit of a clean, so that you know if you do have an oil leak or something in future, um, it's easier to diagnose. Yes. Clean bits. Mm. There we go. Cowl is on. Uh, there's a bit of a fiddle to get things on here. Uh, there's the, obviously the two-stroke cable. Oh, sorry, the two-stroke hose on that side. That's the feed to the carb and then this one here that is the feet of the oil pump which is currently disconnected um, and then we'll fit the right hand side cowl which is that one there you've got two clips here that's the one that clips against the or at least into the two-stroke pump and then that little one there is the female side of the cowl and the male is on there somewhere uh, there it is there so that would be the male female Kevin yeah, there it is. So we're just confirming uh, that the head gasket is indeed on, because uh, I left the apprentice to do that by himself, just making sure that it was done. Oh, All right. Kevin's fan is incredibly clean. He took it apart some time ago and cleaned it off properly. My, my fan and my viewers is, well, you can't see it now, but it's, it's filthy. Yeah, so there we go. Have a bit of a faff to get those clips in. And of course we have all our bits and bobs in one mash and gravy tub. Thanks KFC. Okay. Is that knob giving you a hard time on the other side? <laughs> nope. It's going to keep right now. There's Kevin living his best life. As is clear. The silly golden spaniel. Cleo! Hey, Jackass. Mm -hmm. You special pup. Joining in there. It's part on the wrong way around. <laughs> the apprentice needs some assistance. Um, Kev, so let me let me come in and have a look there. Um, generally, that two-stroke pump cable is what you use to locate everything. Um, and if something is is not allowing you to align it, it probably is something in the way. So in this case, it can only be two things: either the two-stroke pump feed, 
it goes to the pump and the one of course it goes to the carb generally it's the one on the top there that the the big one you've often got to use the your finger just to bend that little clip that male thing is a bit of an issue sometimes let's have a look I didn't film that so th there's a little clip on the underside here that, that female to male part and the male need to kind of just you know wangle the clip as one normally does with a male's clip oh yeah so there's Kevin's spark plug color is good it's a nice kind of medium chocolate brown um, there's obviously a lot of grease on here so we'll clean this up this plug is only about a month or two old so we'll give it a clean stick it straight back in oh left-handed out of focus action so these things often strip and for some reason fall out um, so be gentle with them just nip them up kind of finger tight um, focus correct So there are, that's finger tight. Another top tip, these little Phillips headed screws, or bolts at least, these hold on the, the fan cover. Um, I replace mine with 5mm Allen, because it's simpler and they don't strip, because Yamaha tends to get their, their bolts made by the same guys that make Chappie's bubble gum. And then of course when you do put it in, a bit of copper, slip goes on there because it ultimately does bolt to the engine so it does get pretty hot yeah, Kevin is reinserting the spark plug and I'm busy with copper slipped up bolts for the fan cowl okay spark plug cap is on as is spark plug and of course you never want to over tighten the spark plug because it's steel to aluminium and that's gonna end rather unwell um, once that's in just double check that the plug is solid on there this is another thing a top tip on the beavers um, these spark plug caps eventually wear off and then they don't make a good connection so this one's still pretty solid um, ultimately you place that little brown thing um, which i think is some form of plastic or bakelite yeah you know, yeah kevin's giving his spark plug cap a bit of a rub scratch oh. under the carriage here we go all right so it's pretty much exhaust time but all that old gasket sealer has to go so scrape it off and then we are solid so what we'll do now is once the gasket sealer is off we'll take some carb cleaner and just clean the the overall mating surface so that you can have a nice seal um yeah it's quite a big flange for a little buck yeah i'll get all that filth out of there goodness gracious careful you don't and then uh, because we have a new barrel We'll just take some engine cleaner, or at least carb cleaner, and clean that mating surface as well. If it was a used barrel with the similar type of gasket sealer gunk on, it would need to be cleaned and what have you, in a suitable fashion. Alright, that's uh, performance pipe action right there with, uh, with Kev. That work here. Oh, gasket sealer is the devil, as it turns out. Job is a clean job. That is true. That is this engine. Kevin has spent a lot of time uh, with his dearest beavers, pulling it apart, cleaning it. Um, good call. All right. So exhaust almost is on. There is a trick to getting these exhausts on, and, the, and that is those two big exhaust mounting bolts. You got to just kind of give probably take those in about a turn or two each, so that they're still fairly loose and there's a lot of play. And once those are in, um, the actual exhaust manifold flange, uh, you start to kind of turn those in as well. But incrementally so. So, you know, you can't just tighten those up and then tighten the bottom ones up. That in turn twists the exhaust and cracks it. So you do a couple of turns there, a couple of turns on the exhaust manifold, and so you repeat. Right or wrong, Kev? Right. Mm -hmm. Right here. Her. Yeah, that's uh, Kevy's doing just that. Just kind of seating those bolts a touch. And uh, what I have done is I've put copper slip on the exhaust manifold.
bolts. Um, we probably should have put on those, but we'll come back and do that shortly. The joys of fitting performance exhausts. The nice thing about the Technigas is that you still retain the main stand, which on a lot of performance pipes you lose out on. What a monumental fiff. That 90 degree bend, so you can see it there, it is there. What a mission to get that in. I mean, I'd had trimmed an Allen key, which is that little sucker there to get in there. Um, but a word of advice is replace these bolts with stainless bolts. The factory bolts are made of the softest cheese known to every Frenchman. All right, reassembled. We've given it a bit of a kick to get some fuel into the bore. Uh, let's give it a fire up. Okay. Hey. 